Hello. I tried getting some pictures of Jupiter last night. I think most of what I got pictures of was how much the atmosphere was shaking between here and where I had to look in the sky to see Jupiter. Unfortunately, it was pretty low in the sky, maybe about 10 degrees off the horizon. So that's a lot of atmosphere to look through, plus looking south over two airports and whatever else there is in this urban mess uh, I don't think helped very much. Uh, you can you can get a look at what I was able to take um, video-wise. I prefer to do video with planets because they tend to be fairly bright and so they actually will show up. And the other thing is if you have pretty bad seeing like I had last night, that's the technical term for um, what's visible through the atmosphere or how much the atmosphere is shaking is seeing. If you have bad seeing, that means the atmosphere is shaking a lot and you get a, a blurry or a very distorted image. And if the atmosphere is sitting still, then you have good seeing and things are very clear and they uh, you can see a lot of detail. So obviously this time was not much detail. You can take a look at the movies. What's, what's good about the movies is if you get a moment of good seeing and a bunch of bad seeing, then you can suddenly resolve a lot more detail and you can stop and pick out that particular frame and use that frame to represent what was going on. Now, some things I want to note. You won't see any of Jupiter's moons in the video. They are much smaller and fainter, and so the video for the camera adapts itself to pick up Jupiter, not the moons. So don't look for the Galilean moons. I did catch them in a few other pictures, and maybe I'll put them up elsewhere in this video. Yeah, like that. Okay. Some other things, you can see the two equatorial bands and some of the shading over the south polar region. The south is at the top in these movies. And I think maybe, just maybe a little bit, you can see the red spot creeping over the right side of Jupiter in a few of the moments of better seeing. So. So what I'm getting these pictures and video through is this 10-inch Dobsonian telescope. It's a Newtonian reflector, and as of this month I've had this thing for 20 years. So the eyepiece is up here, and we'll take a little bit more of a look at it later, but it doesn't have any drives or any tracking on it. So what I have to do is get the object in the scope, somewhere where I know it will move through the field of view in a predictable way and get the camera set up on the eyepiece so, and make sure that I can see the object in there and then quick turn on the movie as the thing slides by. Um, I use the lowest power eyepiece I have, which for this telescope is about 50 magnification, and so the rest of the magnification comes from the camera itself. It's tricky and it's frustrating, uh, but I've had some decent results with it so far, as long as planets go. Um, let me just show you a few of the other things that I, ha I have to do to get shots of planets with this thing. That disc that you're seeing the white from at the bottom, that's the primary mirror, so that's 10 inches across. And the secondary mirror is up here, I kind of got it to block the view a little bit there for a second. But you can also see the secondary mirror reflected in the primary mirror at the bottom. And so the opening to the scope, yeah, I even have trouble getting it there. There's, there's the opening to the scope. And so the ratio of the diameter to the length of the scope is too small to do planets well. So what you can do is called stop it down, and I have this extremely precise and technical way of doing that. piece of cardboard with a hole in it. <laughs> so it blocks the rest of the um, the opening and now the uh, the ratio of the the opening or the, the amount of light coming into the length of the scope is greatly reduced. And so it does alright with planets now. And you can still get some light going in there. I mean you can see some of the mirror down there. Um, but that's that's how we deal with that. So this is <clears throat> my 10-inch Dobsonian telescope, which um, one of my neighbors even said last night looks like a cannon. And 
yeah, I you know, have to agree with that. That was kind of its nickname for the longest time. Oh, look, the Carl's nearby is remodeled. Whatever. Um, <clears throat> so this is what I'm looking through to get those uh, pics of Jupiter and Saturn.